Come on. Good boy. Okay, everybody, I would like to have a quick chat. This won't be very long, I think, on the theory of saddling. A little while ago, I had this guy in a video and he was saddled up. And some people say, well, how'd you, how'd you get that done? How did it go? Um, and uh, I thought I would quickly go over that today with you as I've been working with him more, um, but I haven't covered his saddling process. I think in total, he's probably been saddled about maybe three or four times. Um, I've dragged him around in lessons sometimes just on the end of the lead rope with the saddle on and, and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys some thoughts uh, on how I like to get a horse saddled that has never been saddled before. Uh, currently, I've got the twins in here, so if Luke comes over, we'll have to chase him off a little. We shall see. Now, uh, when I saddle a horse, I usually have already done some stuff with uh, like a tarp or a blanket or uh, just a basic pat, some kind of thing that's going to go on their back. So that when I do approach them with something that's going to go over top and under them, uh, I've already tackled a lot of the other stuff. Okay, go away, Luke. Nobody wants you here. Thank you. Okay. Um, come here. Come here. Come. Good. Okay, and uh, that means what that means is that um, I've I've tackled. Don't chew on my saddle pad. I've tackled some of the things that I'm going to end up dealing with when I put a saddle on. So for example, um, the saddle pad, a lot of people like to have their horse smell it and, and all kinds of stuff like that and check it out and, and whatnot. But you know, until you put it on their back, you're never really going to quite know what they're going to do. So it's been probably a few weeks since I've last done this. Um, we've been successful every single time. Come on. But what I'll do is I'll have him <laughs> be calm and I don't have that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring him forward. Come here. Good. Okay. Um, have him come be here without looking like he wants to flee right away. And uh, we'll have him come another step. Good boy. Now, when I think about saddling, I'm thinking about an awful lot of reassurance. Um, and him and I have been through quite a bit. We've done all kinds of groundwork and stuff like that. And I've had plenty of practice to say, hey, you're okay, it'll be all right. So when I approach him with a saddle pad or something like that, we could let him sniff it, but mostly I just wanna just put it up there. Now, what we can see here, what we can objectively see is his head went up. And I don't want him to get stuck there. I don't want him to be there and stay up there. So I'll ask, for his head to come down. And we'll ask again. Luke's kind of over there, so he might be thinking about Luke a little. There. And what I want to do is I want him put him put him back in his resting position. And he's paying attention to flies and he's paying attention to Luke and stuff, but um, we're gonna have him have his head down again. Okay. And then we get to practice a lot at being reassuring and comforting and saying, hey. Don't worry, you can put your head down and it'll be safe and it's no big deal and that's just a saddle pad on the So I'll come back over here and remove it. And you see how his head came up when I went up beside him? We'd like that to not happen. So what I'm trying to convey here is my theory of saddling is that I'd like him to be in his default relaxed state the whole time that I bother to do anything. So again, I'm just gonna kind of nonchalantly kind of wander up and ask for his head down. Down. And when you're asking for a horse's head down, there's not a lot of pressure here. We're just kind of holding and maintaining a little bit, maybe three or four pounds. It doesn't help that Luke's here, but there's nothing wrong with doing multi-horse training. So I'll ask a little more. That's pretty good. And now I'm just gonna chuck this thing on his back. 
and we'll see if we can get a quick response for down. We can. So that gives us a good sign. Like if he had continued to keep his head up, even though I was asking for down, it would have indicated to me that there's a problem uh, and he can't release from wherever he was at in regards to having that thing on his back. I know you've got this. So we remove it and his head comes up again. And this is a process that I will really take my time on. Um, I won't push him. I won't just kind of chuck it on and see what happens or let him work it out. I don't think that that kind of thought process is effective long term. Short term, they might get it worked out, but maybe they don't. Maybe they flip out for a while. I don't think it's good for a horse. I don't think it's effective training and uh, allows them to kind of look at you and say, thanks for taking things in bite sizes. I really appreciate that. So we'll come up and we'll just say, it's cool, man. Chuck that up. And not a lot of change. In fact, he's already scratching at his own flies and stuff like that. and doesn't seem to care. And he's quite relaxed. What I don't have is anything on the end of my lead rope that is trying to run off. But my, my bar is also that I don't have a horse that is chucking their head up high, is getting really worried, has big wide eyes or any of that. So I'd call this relatively successful at this point. I'm going to drag him forward, see if he'll take a step. That's a good boy. And then what we can do is we can take our saddle and chuck this on. And there will actually be plenty of times that I will have this incredibly loose. I won't be thinking about keeping it tight or keeping it uh, uh, constricted in any form. Even the halter itself is quite loose. Um, I don't want him to feel like he's trapped while I do this. So let's grab the saddle. And um, what I want to do is I just want to very, in a very relaxed way, place it on his back. And uh, we'll see what he does. I think he'll put his head up a little, but you never know. Back up. Back up. Back up. Okay. So that is a reaction that I definitely don't want to see. I don't want him trying to get away from it. I don't want him thinking that it's trying to attack him or I'm trying to attack him. So I'm going to bring him forward again. He's got to come towards the saddle and me. And we'll give this another go. We'll ask for his head down. Pet him, reassure him. If I come over here and he's already got his head up, then I'll come back, make him just have a little move there, head down, right? Let him scratch a fly or two, head him, and we're going to try again. So I come over here, his head isn't really adjusting yet. I'll pet him and I'll actually come back and we'll have another quick move forward. Good boy. Okay, come over here again, pet him, raise the saddle up. His head came up with it. Head down, head down, good boy. Pet him. He's taking a step back and all of these things count. To have success, at least in my opinion, to have success in saddling a horse where they don't hopefully they don't freak out is to just do things in bite size with lots of reassurance and that's sort of the theory that i have when i raise that up it's a little much it's not bite sized yet i'll have him come back head down Wait for his attention. Come over again. It's not that bad. He's come up a little, but it's not a lot. We'll come up with the saddle. No change. Down. Come up with the saddle. Place it on. Head high. <laughs> it's okay. Head down. Down. 
Now, the other thought process is to take the stirrups off. And I know that some people are probably screaming at their screen right now. Just take the stirrups off and it'll be so much better. But um, I just don't. I don't tend to take the stirrups off. Because they're always going to be on anyways. So there's the head down. We're going to come up again. He gets a little bit worried. It's not that worried. Head down. That was quick. That was feather light. It's coming backwards for flies. I've even actually sprayed him down already. Okay, we'll come up. It's a little better. We'll come over and down. Check his head. He says, I'm a little worried with flies. Back him up. Back up. Yeah. So it's a start. I definitely wouldn't finish at this point. This is not a done deal. But each little step along the way, we try to just say, you're a good horse. It's okay. It's all right. I'll come over. Take everything off. Put it down. And then do a complete reset. Head down. Down. Pet him. And then start again. So, when I was asked, well, how'd you get the, the saddle on? What'd you do and everything? It's a lot like this. It's really quite time consuming. Um, I'm not just going to chuck it on, wrap it around, and, and hopefully hope for the best. I'm going to be checking every step along the way from raising the saddle up to putting it down, putting it on. Sometimes you got to test, sometimes you just give something a go to just see, like coming up really quickly or placing it on and you move around. Those kinds of things you can do, but the idea would be to just do it in little bite-sized chunks. Um, and then, yeah, and then you just kind of nonchalantly go about your business. He doesn't really think too much. I'll ask him to come forward. Say good boy. It's a little too far forward. Back up. Right there, there. Come around with the saddle. I can see it's a bit much still. There actually may be times that I would put this on the ground and, and really release them from it, but I'm going to hold on to it this time. I call the jack-in-the-box effect where they keep popping their head up until they don't and it just kind of stays calm we'll see if he's rigid we'll check not too bad some horses that are <laughs> Back up. Some horses that are really rigid, their head will go up before they move. So we want to keep an eye on things like that. You can't let that girth down just yet. And we reset. He's not ready yet, at least not right now. 
And that's my theory of saddling. <clears throat> that's going to take a little bit here. I'm sure it'd be probably kind of boring to watch the whole thing, but that's what I would be doing for each horse that has a little bit of trouble with a saddle or blanket or tarps or whatever. And um, that's it. Hopefully that's been a little bit interesting. I'm gonna continue on with this. Um, I'll record it and uh, you guys can see how it goes. And, but I'm just going to do the job rather than talk about it. So I'm gonna do that. That's not good. Back up. that way. Cool. Good. Open time, eh?
Almost. And that's the process that I would go through <clears throat> to where he looks better. Now, it took me, I don't know how long it took me. I'd actually have to look at the screen to see how long this one's been, 25 minutes, with a little bit of talking in the beginning. But when I'm more in the rhythm of doing things and he catches on to my rhythm of doing things and each time I kind of do things, even if we mess up, I go too fast, he can't handle it. <laughs> then, um, you know, we just have a reset, but we just keep doing the same rhythm of things. And then he gets some confidence out of it and it comes together. So it took a little while. I'm definitely going to continue to work on it now that we're back in the saddle, <laughs> so to speak, in training. Um, but I wanted to cover getting a, getting a saddle on a horse without having them be so concerned or worried in, uh, in the whole process from beginning to end to taking it back off, all that kind of stuff. There's no real reason for me to move forward until everything I do from bringing the saddle out, putting the saddle pad on, chucking it over, putting the girth down, putting it up. And he just looks like he's Mr. Sleepy Pants the whole time. That's my goal. That's my theory. Uh, I'm not going to say I do it perfect all the time. I'm not uh, the best or perfect in any way, shape or form, but I'm working on it. And uh, this is the idea that I have to get that done. So hopefully that's been kind of helpful. I guess this turned into a little bit longer of a video than I thought it would be. Luke's on his way over. So uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of playtime done with these boys. And uh, I'll see you guys in the, in the next video. Um, until then, have a good day.